and this entire stronghold structure was built by Jeb during the development of Minecraft Beta 1.8. Here we have a couple of old jail cells. Uh, hello? What are you doing here? Did you get separated from your tour group? Uh, I guess so. I've been here all night. Oh, I see. Well, we run tours through here every day, uh, so we installed some emergency release mechanisms on the inside of the doors, just in case anyone gets trapped. <laughs> didn't you listen during your safety briefing? Uh, I, I, I didn't have a... Oh, well, never mind then. Come on, group. Let's carry on. At the end of this corridor is an ancient stronghold library. So, it has where's that? Years. Oh, I'm such an idiot. Wait for me! Wait, wait for me! Where did they go? Oh, never mind. Welcome back everybody to another episode of Minecraft The Journey with me, Bugman CX. Here we are inside of this humongous stronghold which we uncovered in the last episode. This is the Beta 1.8 stronghold generation that actually works. It's not an entirely complete stronghold because there is one major feature missing, but no spoilers, we'll come to that in Beta 1.9. Right now, I'm just exploring this thing, and I'd like to break down the stronghold in a little bit more detail, go over some of the features of the rooms and things like that, so let's get to it. Before we go exploring the inside of the stronghold, I wanted to try and get a sense of how large it is from the outside, but I'm way too lazy to dig out all of these chunks, so I thought I'd rely on a little bit of witchcraft, because I was watching these old reruns of Bewitched from the 1960s, maybe you know it, maybe you don't, but anyway, they make it look so easy, and if they can do it, I can do it, right? So let's give this a try. I'm going to start out with something small, nothing too crazy at the moment. I'll just focus my mind on these trees in front of me and see if we can get rid of them. Alakazoom, trees go boom! Wow. Okay. That went better than expected. All right, let's try another one. Not too much. Let's just go layer by layer. <clears throat> okay. The sky is blue and the grass keeps growing. Abracadabra, grass get going. Wow. All right, these are getting pretty corny, but they're working. Wix and Watts and Wallop and Wirt, magic powers clear out that dirt. Cool. <laughs> All right, we still have more layers to get rid of, but let's try. Grey rocks and grey blocks, leave me alone. Clear yourself out. Go away, stone. Wow, we're starting to get there now. All right, let's clear this up a little bit more. Diamonds and coal, what a bore. Move these along, clear out, or... I should have got a job writing greeting cards. But look at that, you can see almost the entire structure now. All right, there's just a bit of junk left behind, so let's see what we can do about that. Some say adminium, some call it bedrock. Just get rid of it, stupid block. <laughs> well, well, okay, there's the entire structure. Unbelievable. I just, I can't believe that worked. All right, all right, you got me. I didn't really use witchcraft to clear out these chunks. I just used a creative copy of my world and MC edit to clear out all of the blocks that I wasn't interested in, leaving behind just the stronghold. But I think it gives us a really great idea of what the layout of the stronghold looks like and just how big it is as well. I left these dungeons in too. Oh, did you see that? Oh, just some creepy eyes were right in there looking at me. I thought I would leave the dungeons here as well because although they're not officially part of the stronghold, you will find them connected to many strongholds, probably because the game sees these as caves, I suppose, and it can open up the little corners like this and connect them directly into the stronghold. But if we just fly around a bit, you can see all of the different room shapes and configurations. Now, I don't know exactly how the game works out what the layout of the stronghold should be, other than the fact that it starts out with the central staircase and then sprawls out from there. But I would like to take a closer look at some of these rooms. As we've seen, the stronghold's made up of many different types of corridors and rooms all connected together to make up this maze-like structure. Other than some specific blocks for certain rooms, like planks and bookshelves, the main structure is made up of stone brick variations. Overall, it's 45% stone brick, 30% mossy stone brick, and 20% cracked stone brick. 5% of the stronghold blocks are made up of infested stone bricks. Infested? Well, we'll have to come onto that later. 
Strongholds have a variety of different rooms. Each one has an entrance with a 3x3 opening, or a wall with a wooden door, or an iron door with buttons. But you can also find some rooms with a 3x3 opening with a gate of iron bars. Many of the rooms lead to dead ends, but if they don't, they'll connect up to a passage that runs between the rooms. Sometimes caves or mineshafts can intersect with the stronghold generation, changing the stronghold and giving it a ruined feel, opening up the caves a little bit more. Sometimes this will result in some weird generation, like floating doors, something that's not usually possible. You're also more likely to find dungeons connected to the stronghold or in the surrounding areas. And the reason for this is because there are more air blocks underground thanks to the stronghold, and dungeons require an air block to connect to when the game tries to place them. At the centre of the stronghold is the central spiral staircase with random rooms connecting from the exits. The stronghold can have connected rooms up to a maximum distance of 50 rooms or 112 blocks horizontally. You'll find all sorts of different rooms that make up the stronghold. You'll find large rooms. There will be between zero and six large rooms per stronghold with three exits and one entrance. And there might be different types of decoration inside these rooms. There'll be empty rooms that have no decoration. There'll be rooms with stone pillars containing a stone brick pillar in the middle with torches on the top. There could be a room with a fountain in the center or storerooms, which have two levels. There'll be a cobblestone structure in the middle and a ladder going up to some kind of attic. And if you climb the ladder, you'll find a small chamber with a loot chest. These loot chests have a chance of containing an apple. Apples were introduced all the way back in InDev, but this is the first time that they've been officially obtainable in survival Minecraft. The stronghold will have crossings, which are made up of these strange little slab walkways. They'll all be connected differently, but each one has a stairway leading down from across the main entrance, possible exits to the left and right, and a small bridge of slabs heading up to another exit that's up higher than the others, and that'll lead off into other parts of the stronghold. The stronghold could generate with prison cells, and there could be between zero and five prison cells in each stronghold. They run along a little corridor like this, and they're made up of iron bars with an open iron door, although there aren't any buttons to control that door. Inside, you can see that the cells are connected with an iron bar running between them. The spiral staircases lead you up and down, connecting different levels of the stronghold, and there could be between zero and five spiral staircases per stronghold. The straight staircases are made up of cobblestone, and they generate, leading you up and down, connecting different corridors and rooms. Again, there could be between zero and five of these per stronghold. The corridors are all different shapes and sizes, but they could generate as a bare corridor with up to three different exits, a corridor with a turn going left or right, and corridors which can just lead to dead ends. And of course, no stronghold would be complete without the libraries. You might find between zero and two libraries per stronghold. In the stronghold we generated, there was only one library, and this one happens to be a small library. The small library generates with these tight little corridors made up of bookshelves, and it will generate with one loot chest, so be on the lookout for that. If you happen to stumble across a large library, you'll notice that there's a second level, and you can access that level via the ladder at the back of the library. Once you're up the top, you'll see that we're up here on this little balcony, and you can look down and see the main library areas below you. But notice how there are no cobwebs up here. For some reason, this part of the library gets well maintained. You'll also notice a chandelier in the middle of the room with some torches in some very strange positions, positions that torches shouldn't normally be in. There's also a loot chest in the back of this library, and this one happens to contain, ah, some paper. But what's the point of the stronghold if it's not just for exploring? Well, I mentioned that the strongholds in Beta 1.8 are unfinished. They'll get an update in Beta 1.9 with a couple of tweaks and one major new feature. So we'll definitely have to come back and check them out again. Well, I think it's about time we try and uncover the mystery of this boss mob. Jeb gave us an indication that some kind of bosses were being added to the stronghold in one of his tweets, but I've been all over this place about a hundred times and all I ever encounter are regular old mobs. No kind of, whoa, just like those. <laughs> no kind of boss or anything like that. And so far, the most challenging part of the stronghold is trying to get out again whenever you get lost. And I can tell you what, getting lost is very, very easy. So maybe if the bosses won't come to me, I'll just go to them. I do remember seeing that 5% of the stronghold structure was made up of infested stone bricks, and I'm keen to discover exactly what that means. So what I'm going to do is just start hacking away at the stronghold here and see what we can discover. Oh, 
Hello. What are you? Well, I think I recognize you. I've seen you before, but you were a lot less 3D and maybe a bit more flat. You're a silverfish. And the skin for this mob was added to the game back in beta. Once I outrun this little thing, I'll have a look at that. But you don't seem to be very vicious, do you? In fact, I don't think you're doing anything at all. No, you're just pushing me. So much for your boss mob, Jeb. It's not very challenging. Well, after a little bit of work, I've managed to trap this thing inside of this crude little aquarium here, complete with a fence gate. Yes, Minecraft Beta 1.8 has fence gates. I haven't even mentioned that yet, but it does. And look at its little face there moving back and forth. You get a really good look at it underneath the fence gate there. And you can see it's got small little black eyes and it kind of wiggle wobbles back and forth like this as it's moving around, following me, of course. Now, the silverfish was added in beta 1.8 as a mob, but the texture file for the mob was actually added in beta 1.7. And you might be wondering, why would they include the texture file for a mob that doesn't exist yet? Well, I think it's probably because beta 1.7 was originally planned to be the adventure update, but you might remember that it was released early and it contained just the new piston blocks and shears. But you know, they removed a whole lot of functionality so that they could release beta 1.7 with something for the players to do. And so what I think happened is Jeb probably forgot to remove this texture file and so it snuck its way into the beta 1.7 release. But here in this little cage we can get a closer look at it and if you listen to the sounds around me, you might hear a spider- well ignore that zombie, but you might hear a spider hissing. It's not actually a spider, that's coming from the silverfish, because the silverfish currently borrows sounds from the spiders and they'll get their own sound later, but right now this is what they sound like. Silverfish in beta 1.8 have 20 hit points. That is a lot of health. That's the same amount of health as the player. They're also supposed to do attack damage of around about one and a half hearts worth of damage with each hit. But as you've seen, they seem pretty tame to me. I don't know what's going on with them. Stone bricks and infested stone bricks are actually separate block numbers within the game. Block ID 98 is for stone bricks and block ID 97 is for infested stone bricks. And I happen to know that this block here is a regular stone brick and this one here is an infested one. But how could I possibly know that? Maybe I use some sort of cheaty texture pack to tell the difference? Well no, as you can see there's no way to do that because the game actually shares the same texture for these two different block ID numbers. But there is another method that you can use, and that comes down to how fast the block takes to break. If you just walk up to these blocks with an open fist like I have and tap on them, you'll see that the crack that appears as you start to break the block goes at a certain speed. And for this block, it goes around about this fast, but for this block next to it, it's much faster. Let's go again. Quite slow and much faster. And this one going faster tells me that this one is an infested stone brick. And I guess that's because the game wants you to break these blocks before you realize it and pop out the little beasties. So let's do that with the pick as well. This one takes about this long and this one much faster. Whoa, hello, another one. Nope, we've lost the other one. Oh well. Now it's my understanding that one of the behaviours of the silverfish is that once it's got nothing to track, it should bury itself back into a block, and I'm keen to try and see that in action, but right now this thing's tracking me, and I've also added on a texture pack which makes the glass blocks here transparent so that we can see exactly what's going on. But if I just back off gently and get to say around about 12 to 16 blocks, this thing should suddenly lose interest in me and hopefully bury itself into a block. So right now, if I'm correct, this block here, or this block here, that one there. It's put itself into that block there. So that's nice. If you're at least able to outrun them, then they'll just disappear back into the blocks. There's one more behavior of the silverfish that I want to test. And so I've built this stone pyramid here, but don't let your eyes deceive you. This is 100% infested stone. And the behavior I want to test is the swarming behavior of the silverfish. Now, if I head on inside here and we'll just break the block at the top of the pyramid. We should get a silverfish spawn and we do. And right now it's pretty harmless. But if I actually punch this silverfish, then any silverfish in range may pop out of any of the infested blocks that they inhabit. So let's just give you a little love tap. Did we get any? Yes, we got one behind us here. So if I give you another tap, oh, a couple more. And if I just keep doing this for a little while, I'm pretty sure soon enough, 
This entire pyramid should just start to disintegrate before our eyes. And yeah, they're really coming thick and fast now. The more and more I punch, the more and more drop out of the pyramid above me. Oh, this is the biggest doormat I've ever seen. Come on, you little things. And that is a view you don't get every day. Look at them swarming around me down there. I think it's time we do a little bit of pest extermination. Goodbye, little silverfish. Oh, that is enough of this for one day. Oh. Oh, hey, guy. Goodbye. Oh. Well, yeah, close enough. Well, I came back out here to the creative world where we dug out all of the surrounding blocks just to see approximately where this room is because this is the room that I logged out of in my journey survival world and I wanted to see sort of where it connects up because what I want to do is convert this little hallway here into a stairwell that goes back up to the surface so that we can enter and exit the stronghold with a little bit more simplicity. This seemed like a good location as well because it's approximately in the center of the stronghold, sort of. As you can tell from here, you can get just about everywhere else. So it's good enough for me. So what I'm going to do now is go back into survival, hook up a nether portal down here, then dig a staircase that goes up to the surface and see where we come out. And hopefully we'll be a little bit better connected. And that stairwell now comes out here, basically in the middle of nowhere. Nowhere interesting anyway, but it is useful if we do need to come up to the surface for some wood or something like that. But we now just have a staircase going down to a nether portal. And yes, I know this tunnel is three wide and the nether portals are only two wide. It's really annoying, but I'm just working around the limitations of the game at the moment because one day I will expand that out to a three by three and it will look much nicer. But if you hop on through to the nether now, you'll see that we're also connected. And as we hop in, hello. Yes, we come out here into a little extension of the stronghold, complete with some jail cells and ghasts everywhere because we are, of course, in the nether. And this transitions into the snowy tunnels. And I've had to make this extra section here and then transition it into a stronghold like tunnel. And if you follow this back out, this takes you to our snowy section with the nether ceiling hole and back to the alpha area portals just here. So it is a bit of a long trek to go between this stronghold and the beta area, which is way over there somewhere. But at least it is all connected now and we don't have to worry about ghasts shooting us every time we want to visit the stronghold for whatever reason we want to visit the stronghold. And there are good reasons to visit the stronghold. Let me just pop back in there and I'll explain why. And that's because the stronghold gives us two unique new blocks in the game. We can already craft the stone brick as we know, but now we have the mossy stone brick variant and the cracked stone brick variant. Unfortunately, the only way to get these right now is to tear down the stronghold. But I have found a way to get these blocks without me having to do that. And you guessed it, it just comes down to block metadata values. So here we have the stone brick stairs, which are block ID 109. And right now when you mine stairs, you just get a regular stone brick block back and that's block ID 98. But if stairs are facing in a particular direction, they'll have a block metadata value. So in this case, we have stone brick stairs facing in the direction of two, which is that way. And these stairs therefore have a block metadata value of three. So if we mine this block, it will drop block ID 98, but it will inherit the metadata value of three. Now, right now that shows up as nothing, it just looks like a regular stone brick, but it does still have that metadata value when mined. So over here we have block ID 98 with a metadata value of one, and that matches the metadata value of stairs in this direction and the same here for the cracked. So if I were to mine this stair block here, I would get one block back, it would be block ID 98 with a metadata value of one and exactly the same here for the cracked. So all we need to do is place stairs down in particular directions, mine them back up again, and we can get an endless amount of these blocks. But it isn't as simple as all of that because the whole process just takes an awfully long time to do. So it doesn't take too long to break these blocks, a little bit longer than we'd like, but it's not too terrible. But in order to be able to create these blocks, I need to mine at least eight stone blocks. And that's because I need to take these cobblestone that they drop, if I can pick all of them up, put them into the furnace and then smelt up another eight stone blocks. And I won't make you wait through all of that, but I can then take the stone blocks, put them in the crafting grid and then 
turn those into stone brick blocks like so. Then turn those into stairs and we have two left over. Now I have four stone brick stairs only. And then I can place those down like this and like this. And then if I mine them back up again, we get ourselves the mossy and the cracked stone brick blocks. So as you can see, that whole process takes a long time. I guess it is shortened by the fact that I'm constantly smelting cobblestone into stone anyway, just in order to be able to build around the place. But then to create the stairs, you lose blocks doing that. And then when you break these blocks, you lose blocks doing that. So it's a very lossy process, but it is free because I have endless stone as long as I just keep mining it. Well, that order about duo, <laughs> I'm an acrobat. Well, that ought to about do it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching. And um, now I've just got a big noisy nether portal behind me, but oh well. If you enjoyed today's video, then feel free to subscribe if you haven't, comment or like the video. All of that stuff really helps me out. And if you want to support me further, you can join my Patreon below, or you can click the thanks button at the bottom of this video and support me that way. I also want to say a huge thank you to my amazing, wonderful patrons for supporting me directly. Oh, it's amazing that I even have them. Thank you so much. And for everyone else, I'll see you in the next episode. But until then, this has been Bugman CX. You've been watching Minecraft The Journey. Will that thing ever shut up? Treatment for your rash. Uh, thanks Minecraft.